All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to thread your needle. You guys are gonna be using similar needles to this. Um, if you look closely, they have a really nice big opening uh, so they can fit any types of yarn. Fuzzy yarns are still hard to fit um, in here, so I'm gonna actually show you a fuzzy yarn, what I would do. What you wanna do is however big you're gonna be using this string, you kinda of wanna measure it out just by eyeballing it. So I want to do about five rows, just starting with like a nice tabby weave or a plain weave. So I wanna make sure to kinda of just with my hands, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I just wanna make sure to cut my yarn. I always use the back of my scissors to make the best yarn cut, okay? And I'm going to roll this yarn back up and I'm gonna get some masking tape and I'm going to put the edge down that I just used and put that back in the yarn boxes so that the people that use it next have a nice beginning for their yarn. So what you're gonna do when you have a fuzzy yarn like this or any yarn really, but especially when you have fuzzy yarn, it honestly helps to get it a little bit wet on the top so I lift it a little bit <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you're going to thread it through the needle like that um, if you get a part of the fibers that are coming out around it then you did it wrong you want to make sure to take the yarn out and redo it but what you'll do is you'll just do the basic X knot again once and I like to do it twice just to make sure it stays and you're ready to start weaving. So this is gonna be actually where your needle is. It will be the end of your weaving. So you've gotta go back to the beginning. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do, just because this is the beginning of your weaving, we are going to do a knot. And you can go right to left or, le or left to right, whatever is most comfortable for you. Maybe I'll go left, right actually, since I'm right-handed. Um, it doesn't really matter though, but you're gonna start off with a knot. The rest of the times that you start and stop string, you most likely won't make a knot. Um, if you do, it'll be a different type of knot from this. So just make sure your knot is kind of to the side. We don't want it to be super, super evident. And then you also wanna start up a little ways. I'd say about a finger, because we wanna make sure that you have enough room for fringe. So down to attach your fringe, I mean. So you wanna make sure that you give about a finger's worth of space and you can begin weaving, okay? So what I'm gonna do um, is just for plain tabby weaving, which if you look on your types of weaving paper, it is this number one weaving, it says tabby plain weaving. And all you're doing is you're going under one, over one, under one, over one, under one, over one. And then on your next row, you have to go the opposite. So if you went under, you need to go over. If you went over you need to go under okay so that is a really handy diagram for you guys to use but again this is just the simple tabby weaving this is um the most easy one if you struggle with art this is one that you should go for a lot so since the, i have the knot i'm already over so i'm going to go under over under over under and i ran out of room on my needle so i'm going to slide my needle and i'm going to pull the yarn through making sure that it doesn't get knotted, kind of keeping things nice and straight. So I just kind of recheck where I'm at. I just went under, so I need to go over, under, over, under, over, under. I like to always end on a yun, an under. Uh, ending on an over just means your string is on top and it, you're not really pulling it through anything. So again, I'm just kind of making sure my weaving is nice and straight. Again, I ended on an under, so under so I need to go over under over under over under oops make sure not to go through the string that's something that I've had kids do before is when they're using these sharp needles they sometimes when they're going under over they actually go through the string you don't want to at any point go through the string you really are just going under over under over so I, again I ended on an under you can see my string is under the other one so I'm gonna go over under over under over so I ended on an over which means when I come back around I've got to do a little I call it like a C loop because your letter that you're making actually looks like a C it's not really a very technical term but we're in Miss Broadland so I went over so I need to go under over 
And again, you should be keeping track of this as you're going. So if you know that your string went under, then this time your string goes over. If your string went over, then your string goes under. So it's important to keep doing the opposite of the row underneath and very gently you pull it through. Now this is where a lot of kids make a big mistake. They do a really hard pull. And as you can see, that stretches your warp and that's gonna actually keep making your warp, warp go inside like an hourglass. We do not want that. Where the warps are is where you want them to stay. So if you need to loosen up your mark, your, um, your knot, then you need to do that. We don't wanna pull so tight that we start to go in like this, okay? You wanna keep it nice and straight. These should remain perpendicular, or actually they should remain parallel to the base of your board and they should remain perpendicular to your weaving. If you start to do this, you're starting to get angled, you're gonna stretch your warp out and your weaving is gonna be super stretched out, okay? So I'm just gonna continue going on, find the beginning in, or find the beginning again, find the beginning of where I was. I just went oh, under, so I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under, uh, can't get it so I got to go under again being gentle and what I like to do is I like to push my strings down now what you're gonna start to see is you're actually gonna start to see a weaving taking place right and again I'm still making sure that I am checking to make sure um, what happened below me so I know right here that this is I went underneath my warp so this time I need to go over under over under over under and then pull through this these um, thicker medium yarns make a really nice um, a really nice base for you to build upon they go very very quickly so again double check and I went under last time so I need to go over under over under over under so this time, last time I ended on an over and I went under, you still need to um, change it up when you go around. So I ended on an under this time. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I go again. This time you're gonna do a backward C since you're going other, the other direction. But this time I'm going to go over what I just did. So I'm gonna go over the string under. And that should align with what's already happened in this row. I went under, I went over, so I need to go under again. It really is all just about a pattern and completing the pattern. Again, don't pull too tight that you have that um, edge messed up. So you guys can see that I'm starting to have a lot of differentiation here. I'm starting to see where I went under, where I went over. It's starting to, I don't know if you can tell from the side, but it's starting to create some nice three-dimensionality on my piece. So I'm gonna to continue to weave this, but that is your basic one on the top right here. That is your tabby plain weaving. It's super simple. I recommend everybody starting with the tabbing weaving just to get your base began.